All right. Hello. Hi. Wow. Um, from what I see on my screen, I am ridiculously not in focus. I have been trying to fix this problem. I have no idea what's going on. I have tried two different webcams. Uh, so I don't know if what you're seeing is as wonky as what I'm seeing, but I don't know what to do about it. So I see I see Tara and I see AT. Hello. I hope you guys are doing well. AT, I know you were jonesing for a, a crafty chat. So I hope I hope I have something cool to show you. Actually, probably not. I'm very slow <laughs> today. I oh, but um I've shut off all the computers in the house. And uh, and I will just continue to hope that things don't go horribly, horribly wrong. Um, first thing to show you is I have been working. Do you remember ages ago I showed you guys the Canucks that I was making with the really wonderful kind of thick, cushy yarn that my friend Sam got me? I've gotten them finished. I still haven't woven in the ends, but I am working on the cuffs. And those are the crab stitch that is talked about. Maybe I can even get closer. See, it'll focus up there. Um, it's a crab stitch that's actually on the Canucks page. So if you go to nitty.com and then search for Canucks, it's K-N-U-C-K-S, like knuckles. Um, there is a stitch that she recommends for doing the cuff. And I always thought it was pretty, but I never bothered to do it before. Now I'm bothering to do it. And it's kind of the pain in the butt to get going. But now that it's going, it's just fine. And it's it's really nice. And yes, AT, I love the yarn too. In fact, there is the whole, <laughs> this is what's left after doing all of the connects. Um, it is a marvelous, marvelous yarn. It is very, oh, that focused. Isn't that nice? It is a marvelously squishy yarn. Um, squishy squishy yarn and I had the ball band for it until it fell out and I know I put it someplace brilliant <laughs> which means I'll never find it again but I got this little bag when I was at that conference in New Orleans nice padded pouches and little breathable pouches on both sides and then one zippered side two zippered sides and the big middle zippered part and um you can zipper the sides the two little side pockets and then the middle one is just open and has little handles on it how cool is this and then as if that weren't enough check this it is the ever expanding bag and because it doesn't have the, the zipper in the middle for that middle part, um, and it doesn't have any Velcro, it is my new knitting bag because it's, uh, it's crazy good. There's no information on this bag as to where they got it from or what, because it's a vendor thing. And they, I'm snapping the snaps back together. Um, it's a vendor thing. You know, they put their name on the outside and... I don't know where it came from, but I love this. So I suppose, I don't know, there's those supply catalogs that have all the branded stuff like, like those. Let's see if we can get that. Oh no, that's not going to focus, is it? It's so interesting what the thing wants to look at. You can still tell what it says. Um, <laughs> yes, they probably do come from China. That's my guess. Uh, I also got these from Tara, from Tara, from Erica. I've been talking to Tara so often now. It seems like you're Erica. Uh, I got these from Erica for Christmas, and I haven't done anything with them yet because I, this morning, found the pen. Erica sent me artist tiles. These are for Zentangling. Oh, good. Robin's here. I've been holding off on your pictures. Um, so that's a pack of 75 
acid-free black tiles. And in order to work on it, you need to have either a really good white gel pen or, in this case, a really good, I should show you the brand name on that, uh, a really good, hmm, nope, no, it's not going to. This one is a paint-like ink for dark and light paper. It is archival permanent opaque and acid free. And that's the opaque thing is what makes it work. So maybe next week I will have, I will have something to show you in that vein. I'm also getting ready for Passover. So I forgot about that. It's a lot of cooking. And there was one other thing. Oh, I think I left it downstairs. Well, I can show you Robin's fabulous stuff. Uh, and Robin has not just fabulous stuff, but she has she has a, a fabulousness and I believe a question. So I am going to share Robin's pretty. So this is this is a shawl. Duh, everybody says duh, Heather. So Robin, I'm going to read your your little blurb here. Um, she said, this is a shawl I made many years ago that I've always had trouble wearing. One reason I think is because I never actually blocked it, which I still need to do. So it seems a little small and it hangs funny, but also the fringe is too long and it tangles super easily. What length of fringes do you guys find work? And would it be better to remove them entirely? To which my heart freaks out because, oh my goodness, that's pulling, pulling out fringe. <laughs> and there's a couple more pictures. Ooh, that one's very pretty. Don't blush, Robin. It's pretty. Now that end, th th those edges are those. It, did you crochet that? Because that's some hefty, hefty. Is this whole thing crocheted? Huh. Oh. Yes. She, Robin says, I don't know if you can see the blue beads in the scallops. Yes, I can. Can it, I think you could see it. You can't see it so much in that picture, but you can see it there. And it is all crochet. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'm so sorry that Dawn isn't here today. So Robin, I'm going to guess that that is a double bed, a queen size bed. And that takes up almost the the whole the wingspan takes up almost the whole top of the bed because yeah i can see why that might hang kind of funny i wonder i wonder if when you block it okay this is going to sound really weird <laughs> but then when does anything not sound really weird when it's related to me um what would happen if you get the whole thing wet and you pin it out so that the the triangle the parts that are going to go down your back those are all pinned down but you leave that top edge open what would happen if you put small beach balls i mean like or grapefruits in where your shoulders would be so that you have that middle part stretching a little bit because that's the one thing that i think in crochet it's hard to get that kind of a, a curvature um, to get the um, the drape right, because it's there's no bias or or anything funky like you don't have short rows or or things that you can do with the the knitting. And Robin, I'm sorry the the bandwidth today seems to be really really weird. Part of that oh oh oh, we've had a uh, huge rainstorms going through, and I saw many many things that were down, um, poles and such things. So uh, we are probably lucky to have a live stream at all. But Robin, you got a response from Silver Fox Gray. Oh, this is Joy. This is Joy in China. Well, um, no, she's not in China anymore. She's in Indonesia now, I think. Um, she she often listens to the Crafty Chat or the regular episodes on YouTube after the fact. So 
She said, definitely block it. It will open it up a lot and you can straighten out the triangle so it hangs better. The fringe looks fine. Once it's blocked, the fringe won't look so long. Adding some fancy knotting or beading will give it weight and help with the tangling, but some tangling is normal. And I was thinking that, um, do you remember, Robin, you're too young, for macrame? AT, help me out here. <laughs> How would you describe the, uh, when you have fringe hanging down, you can take a couple strands from this fringy bit and a couple strands from this fringy bit and loosely knot those together down at the bottom and you do that all the way across and then bring them back together again. <laughs> oh, good, Robin. You know what I'm talking about. I'll bet you money if you, if you, um, if you pull the, the end point of the fringe or the, the terminus of the fringe down just a couple inches, which is easy to do with a macrame. I was always shocked at how much, how much jute gets used up in macrame. Um, I'll bet you money that would work. <gasps> Ooh, and you could do beads. You could put little beads in there. Um, although they wouldn't be pretty and small like yours. I'm going to pull that, that picture back up again with the the pretty beadedness so everybody can see it again. All right, so there's the, the picture on the bed. And there you can see the little beads there. Those are so beautiful. That edging is so beautiful. And then flash picture. Oh, do you have black and blue in your fringe? Oh. oh. Is so cool. And there you can see some more, some more of the beads, the pretty, pretty beads. Yeah. Um, aside from the ATV that's racing down the street outside of me, um, I'm thinking rather than, rather than cutting, I always hesitate to cut yarn unless I've tried something else. I mean, cut yarn on a finished product um that black and blue is really cool too because you could have lots and lots of fun with um you could have well, i think you could have lots of fun doing uh color interchange color play with the knots i needed to sleep more is i think what's going on but robin i thought that was beautiful did you did you make that up or is that pattern, is that a pattern that you got somewhere else? She said finally. I will wait a moment. I'm pulling up some other pictures. All right, while we await response from Robin. I hope actually that Robin was able to keep the stream going enough to hear the question. Um, Tara sent some pictures up on Facebook as well. I know it's riveting, riveting viewing action when I'm trying to pull up the screens of things. All righty. So Tara said she is working in all the things. There are knitted sharks that we will see shortly. Oh, we got a, an answer from Robin. She said, I don't really remember. I freehand a lot and might just have seen a pattern for the netting part and then just did standard scallops on the edge until I liked it or ran out of thread. <laughs> I like the way you think. It's beautiful. That is really, it really was beautiful. Uh, Oh, so um, we've got from Tara, uh, skirts for myself made from vintage sheets. Oh, where'd you get those? Cool. Uh, new project bags made from a self-drafted pattern, Easter socks for the husband and knitted sharks for the little Easter basket baskets as per requests. And of course, coffee. 
I think we have the same sewing machine. Holy cow, I really do think we have the same sewing machine. I love that sewing machine. And there's more vintageiness. No, we don't have the same sewing machine. <laughs> it was close. I think it's the same same company though. Yeah, it's close. It's great. Oh, is that a is that a buttonhole? Did you make a buttonhole? Or is that a place where the bobbin thread kinked up on you? Those are very sad moments for me. And those are the Easter socks for the husband. How cool. You must be such a fascinator. Ah, there's some socks. Wow, that was a fully turned hem <clears throat> with only one bobbin. Nice. Oh, those were the sharks. So those are definitely socks. So that, that must be really cool. Really, really cool sharks. And I'm going to, because you gave me the link, yes, I can see it now, to Ravelry, to the shark knit pattern. And I can actually, I think, nope, I think I can switch which window there we go that you get to see <laughs> at you do plenty you do plenty of awesomeness so here is the uh the shark knit pattern wow it's only three bucks and oh look at the gloriousness <laughs> So Tara says this is knit flat and then seamed. Okay, these are hilarious. I can't let my 16 year old see this. It would be bad. It would be bad for me. Wow, and Tara said the skirt hem is about the circumference of a queen size bed sheet, thus marveling at the fact that it was one bobbin. I get it now. I get it now. Now it all makes sense. That that is just amazing. And okay, so now I have another one of yours. This is another shark picture. These are so colorful. The larn, the yarn that you've got is just awesome. I love that. And then we're back to the sheets. Oh, Tara. Tara's offering to knit up a wee bitty shark for thing one. He will be, he will be so happy. He will put it next to his bed and he won't tell me, but he'll have it with him. <laughs> Yarn be glowing. It looks like it's glowing. It should be called glowing if it isn't already called glowing. Um, there was something else. Uh, something else that I thought I saw in the um, in the the chat window. So, um, craftiness is on hold for the next couple of weeks because I have to travel again, and and we've got Passover and spring break and everything. So, uh, we won't be back until April twenty fifth, um, and there won't be any weekly craftlet. In, in between either. I'm going to try and get Andrew to record enough of uh, Cat Came Back to make that possible. But um, I will at least be able to kind of wrap up where we are on the Count of Monte Cristo. We'll get to kind of a, it's not really an end point because now we're barreling down the path towards 
towards the end. So your last day at work, your last day at work is the 25th? Really? I want to show you how far we are through this book, though. All right. Count of Monte Cristo. Big fat book. We have done all of that. And, and by the end of the week, we will have done all of that. Makes a big difference. Um, we're getting there. It's a big old honking book. But this week's, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, if you're not listening in real time, don't worry about it. Just know that when you get to chapters 58, 59, 60, um, the amount of revengeiness just spikes. And <laughs> I don't blame you, AT. It's kind of nice to see progress going. She said she she moves her bookmark after each episode, which is good because small achievable goals. That's what we're we're all about these days. Small achievable goals. Um the uh the level of revengeiness that we get that we got in the last couple of weeks and that we will uh, kind of complete this round this week. Um, wow. Wow. And I don't think, we didn't even see the count this week. He's already done his work. He can go kick back, have a drink and hang with his buds and revel. Everybody else has to deal with fallout. So that's, that's what's on deck for this week as far as that goes. The other thing that I now have a date for you for is on April 26th, the day after the Crafty Chat, Justin and I are going to start the 1984 Brave New Podcast podcast. We're going to do the first chapter of every book as a YouTube live stream. Um, and we'll be doing it through Patreon. So people will have a, an opportunity to sign up so that they can join us on private live streams and uh, ask questions and comment or even um, come on and talk with us. Uh, I think we can do that. And, and we're looking forward to that because 1984, Brave New World, True Believer, really important books. And there's a lot I didn't know about 1984. I thought I did know stuff. No. Learning, learning a lot. Um, but April 26th, the reason that we chose April 26th is because April 26th will be our 11-year anniversary. So when better to start a new podcast venture than on the anniversary of the first podcast venture back in 2006? It's been a long damn time is what I'm saying. Long time. Um, last thing I have to show you, and Tara, you've probably already done this before. Uh, <clears throat> my wonderful husband got me a t-shirt that I love. I mean, I love. And I'm pulling pins out right now so I can show it to you. Um, I love butt. And it's not an insignificant butt. <laughs> <laughs> so he got uh, Aiden the Rise Up t-shirt, and he got me the Burr t-shirt to wear during the last election cycle, which I did some. But the neck, the crew neck, was really, really tight, and it, it, was, not, it was not comfortable enough for me to wear it a lot. So I went and I looked up online, you know, is there a way to turn a crew neck into a V-neck? And I've got... I went ahead and basted it, but I split the, let's see, this is so dark, I wonder how it's going to do. Probably not very well. Maybe I can show it that way. Um, I split the, the ribbing in the front half. So there's the shoulder seam. There's the other shoulder seam. I split the ribbing off from the shirt all the way around in the front, and then you find the midpoint and slice the ribbing right at that midpoint. And then you, um, you do what you do with skirts that have gathers. You know, you have this much, what is it, this much elastic, and you have, you know, <laughs> that much 
that much skirt. And so you find the middle point of the elastic, the middle point of the skirt, and then you just keep dividing it in halves until you get small enough chunks that you can pin and match up the pins on the elastic to the uh, further apart pins on the, the fabric. So that's all I did to the, the neck itself. I know what might help. So that's why you see little sets of two, two pins all the way along. And then I, you see the extra thread there because I basted it on because I don't know in this home if people are going to walk up and remove pins from things or what. Now I'm on the last stage, which is dragging out the sewing machine, but it's also, I have to go back and look at the tutorial because the, the V part has to overlap and it has to be tacked down properly in the proper places. And I don't want to screw that part up, but I was so surprised at how easy the first parts were. Of course, it could be easy because I did it wrong. We shall find out soon. Um, but maybe I'll be able to wear the t-shirt back on the 25th. I keep looking at my calendar because <laughs> I can't remember anything. And I think that's it. I don't think there was anything else I needed to show you. There wasn't anything else on Facebook. Um, you know what? If you hang on just a second, Robin, I can pull up a link for the, the tutorial that I worked. Um, and I found several of them that weren't helpful. But it is... Um, the, <laughs> one of the ones that was okay, it was okay for visuals, but not so great for actual instructions. Um, was a wiki how on cut a t-shirt into a v-neck, which was a good place to start. But there was another one. It's interesting. I'm not seeing. Oh, yeah, I think this might be it. I have to look at the pictures to see if I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this was it. This was the good one. This one is off of thriftyfun.com. And this has uh, really, really nice step-by-step -step single images to help um, help uh, help you focus all the things. And, uh, and she even has some really good close-up pictures of where where you need to get in there and do the detail work. So we like that. We like that a lot. Uh, I think that's it. All right. Have a great week. Oh no, have a great couple of weeks until I see you again on the 25th. I cannot believe how fast this year is going. Every year seems to get faster and faster. It's kind of horrifying. But uh, I hope you have a good time. I hope you're getting spring weather, nice weather. Ooh, and AT wants to take an informal poll before everybody leaves. You want me to say it out loud too? We'll see. We have to wait for our lag. I will have a sip of tea. Ooh, decorating the new house. Mm. I like where this is going already. Oh, Robin, 88 degrees does not sound like spring to me. I'm sorry. It's 70 today. We hit 70. All right, so AT is going to say bathrooms, towel, rods, or lots of hooks. Ooh, Tara says hooks. Heather says hooks. We're waiting to see what Robin thinks. Oh, God, it's probably 88 and 82 and humid, right? It's 70 and humid, but that's because we had just had the storm. It shouldn't be getting humid here yet. Not yet. Please, not yet. Oh, my God, Robin. The, she said the blue bonnets all bloomed in February. <clears throat> 
Tara says rods are a pain and no one puts the towels back anyway. I concur. Robin wisely says it depends on the bathroom. Good point. Good point. I don't know, AT. It's going to depend on your bathroom. You could uh, put pictures up in Craft Literati and have people uh, let you know there. Then we get to live vicariously through you. It's a long bathroom and the tub is at the narrow end. Hooks. Hooks, 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 and hooks. Or even, I don't know if it's big enough to do where you have the, you know, the shelves that have, uh, it looks like wainscoting behind them. So it's a shelf and then a piece of wood that looks like wainscoting that has the hooks on it. So you have the shelf top where you could put Q-tips and things. I don't know. Ooh, yeah, Robin says she has a long, thin bathroom where hooks would get in the way. So it would depend on how thin thinness is. It's a good question. All right. Now that we've solved that thorny issue, I will, I really will now see you guys later. Have a great time. Have a great couple of weeks. I'll see you on the 25th.